that bullshit. But uh, okay, here we go. Topic number three, guys. But Beyonce's powerful Super Bowl halftime performance celebrated black culture. Let's get this video. Here we go. <laughs> Beyonce's new song and video formation has been deemed a black power anthem as well as an endorsement for the Black Lives Matter movement in a timely release before uh, February's Black History Month as well as her performance in the Super Bowl. Now the video is chock full of powerful imagery, uh, some showing her on top of a police car in a flooded New Orleans. There's other images as it slowly sinks throughout the video, uh, images of uh, Martin Luther King, graffiti saying stop shooting us yeah, well that seems pretty clear yeah as well as a super powerful image of a young child uh, in a hoodie uh, sort of dancing in front of these New Orleans cops and then eventually having them uh, put their hands up in the you know don't shoot me hands up uh, movement now it's also a celebration of black culture in itself, uh, of Beyonce's own Southern roots, an embrace of them that contrasts the dated offensive narrative that when a person becomes successful, they should shun their history and where they came from. Uh, the lyrics mention things such as uh, Afro. She says that you can't take the country out of her. And she also talks about her affinity for cornbread and collard greens. So this video was right released there, a day before her uh, Super Bowl performance. And then uh, you can Walk see an image green. here of the Super Bowl performance. Beyonce's backup dancers were dressed in all black with black berets and afros, reminiscent of the way members of the Black Panther Party dressed in the 1960s. They even raise uh, their fists, something very similar to uh, the Black Panther movement. Uh, I love this. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I think what she's doing here is uh, powerful. So. Sinking the New Orleans cop car, mm. it, of course, is going to make some people mad, mm -hmm. right? Oh, no, how dare you? Right. She, she's not respecting the police. Now, remember, some officers during Hurricane Katrina mm. were charged, literally, uh, with shooting at black people trying to escape uh, the flooding right. uh, on bridges as they were trying to cross over to predominantly white areas. Mm -hmm. They would get shot. So you'll excuse people if they're slightly mad about that, yeah. right? And now Beyonce could have played it safe and not made allusions to that or to hands up where she and a lot of people could take that kid dancing and then the cops putting their hands up as no we're flipping the narrative yeah, exactly. here yeah, and exactly. you need to put your hands up. Mm -hmm. And that'll frighten a lot of people, right? Mm -hmm. And she's saying no, but we're the ones getting shot. So hence the sign don't shoot us. Right. Hence the reference to the Black Panthers taking the power back. Mm -hmm. And so I loved it. Fuck I mean, that is really, really strong. Fuck Puerto Ricans. Uh, it it Fuck all them people, takes right? a certain amount of risk. And in, in, in entertainment, you're constantly told, don't take any risk. Don't offend anyone. It right. might jeopardize a couple of dollars here or there. And here's Beyonce saying, I don't give a damn. And she's certainly rich enough to do that. And buried into the songs, probably most people, unfortunately, won't notice. And But, but even if it subtly uh, influences people in the right direction, Fantastic. More power to her. Yeah, no, and, and Katrina's, uh, Katrina, excuse me, is something that's very, very important for Beyonce. In fact, her and Jay Z have donated quietly seven million dollars to wow. the effort uh, following the hurricane. So that's really important. That's so quiet. I didn't even know. That. Yeah, no, exactly. And so I think, and they've donated, I think, a million and a half to the Black Lives Matter movement. So this is something that's very close to her heart, and this is one of her most politically charged videos. And obviously, a lot of people are celebrating this and applauding her for making this movement, especially people within the Black Lives Matter movement. Uh, but some people at, at a particular network uh, may disagree with her stance here as well as her uh, bringing it to the Super Bowl platform. Uh, in fact, on Monday, Mayor Rudy Giuliani uh, commented on Fox News saying the halftime show I thought was ridiculous anyway. I don't know what the heck it was, a bunch of people bouncing around and all strange things. It was terrible. This is football not Hollywood, and I thought it was really outrageous that she used it as a platform to attack police officers who are the people who protect her and protect us and keep us alive. So I get where he's coming from, but obviously her movement is a lot more uh, necessary right now in this movement, and especially on the platform of the Super Bowl. So the Super Bowl is the most viewed sports event in sports history, right? And uh, the NFL fan base is 77% 
white, and the majority of those uh, people are also affluent. So it's like rich white people who do need to hear this message if they're not getting it from somewhere else. So I think it's important that she brought it to this stage. Yeah, that's why they're mad. <laughs> yeah. And it, what a nonsensical comment. This is not Hollywood. What are you talking about? Yeah, the whole thing's Trump entertainment. Mm -hmm. Football's entertainment, <laughs> music's entertainment. Of course it's Hollywood. Right. <laughs> it's all in the same genre. And uh, in his comments were even more uh, disrespectful. Uh, he said, uh, ironically, that the black community needs to quote build up respect for police officers that sounds like know your role know your place and Beyonce in, is in effect saying no this is my role this mm -hmm. is my place mm -hmm. so I have accumulated this power through the success I've had in entertainment and I'm gonna use it right so if that makes you uncomfortable well that's your problem not mine and and she is doing all the right things in terms of if you have a person who's built this platform, you use it for good. A lot of the athletes right. did back in the 1960s. Uh, so whether it was Kareem Abdul-Jabbar or Bill Walton, who was white, who said, oh, we're going to stand up against Vietnam, we're going to stand up for civil rights for African Americans. And so if you want to watch us play basketball and you like us, well, I got a message for you. Stop beating up on black people. Mm -hmm. and, and so, which brings us all the way back to the Black Panthers. Mm -hmm. Giuliani hates the Black Panthers. He, you know, talked disparagingly about them in, the, in that uh, interview, but he always does anyway. And they always use it as like, oh, Black Panthers, they're the worst. But understand what the Black Panthers originally uh, were, wh why they were set up in the first place. Because it was the 1960s, right. and black people were systematically discriminated against mm. <laughs> far beyond what is today, and today is already pretty yeah, bad. Exactly, right. Cenk. right, but if you haven't read anything about the 1960s and you don't know how people were still getting murdered for not knowing their role mm. and and lynched, etc., and the civil rights workers that were killed back then uh, by the Klan. Back yes, then. the Klan was still around and was incredibly powerful. And it's in some relevant today. The and the Black Panthers said, "Hey, listen, I have a Second Amendment right to weapons. Weapons are used against me." And I'm going to use these weapons not offensively, but yeah, for oh this yeah, intended purpose. Self-protection as the founding fathers uh, intended. So when they did that, white people flipped out. And so everybody was like, oh my God, the Black Panthers is black people with guns. Now the NRA should be on their side. It turns out they weren't. Shocking. So the Black Panthers took over a state building once. Now let me show you how differently it went <laughs> than when uh, certain Bundy militia we go. take over a federal building today. The uh, they relevant. went into the California State House and they had weapons. At the time, it was perfectly legal for them to bring weapons into the State House. Right. Nonetheless, everybody went crazy. They didn't take it over like, okay, they didn't take out any of the weapons, they didn't threaten anybody, unlike the militia guys today, right? And <laughs> But people were so... It, disconcerted by the idea that black people came into the state house with weapons that they immediately threw them out from the building and the uh, and the black panthers walked out mm -hmm. they didn't resist it they in fact they got arrested even though they were technically perfectly legal what they had done right afterwards the nra petitioned california the to black change conference. the law so that they couldn't carry weapons anywhere they liked Wait a minute, I thought the NRA was always in favor of weapons everywhere. I thought a good guy with a gun could stop a bad guy with a gun. Turns out when that guy is black, they don't consider him a good guy. And you know who signed that into law in California? The governor at the time. Wait, Wait, Ronald I just saw that. Reagan. So the Black Ronald Panthers, Reagan. as originally conceived, and at some point the cops, well, of course, despised the Black Panthers. Mm. There were several confrontations, and some of them went awry and in a direction they should not have gone in. So that's what everybody seizes upon, right? right? But the original concept of the Black Panthers was, we're going to take the power back. <laughs> if you say right. I got a Second Amendment right, then I got a Second Amendment right. And, I, and I'm going to use it for self-defense, right? And, uh, and, and at that time, they, the reaction was so overwhelming against it, they had to pass laws taking away Second Amendment rights. So now if Beyonce is saying, hey, you know what, we're getting shot again, right? right? And it's a lot of powerless kids, whether they're in St. Louis, they're in mm, New Orleans, mm, they're in Chicago, mm, they're in New York, whoever, mm, wherever they happen to be. Mm, well, I got a little bit of power, and I'm going to use it. Mm, and, mm, and I'm at least going to put that message out there. Mm, that is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Nicely done. Mm. How about they stop committing crimes, Jenk? How about that? <laughs> How about that?
It's just so amazing. And a lot of people don't know that Beyonce's husband, Jay-Z, you, you, do you understand that he's part, he's a member of this 5% nation? They're called the 5%ers, you know? They basically say that, you know, black man is Allah and the white man is the devil. That's what they promote. That's what he's part of, that movement. Jank? Is, is that not? No. Jay-Z. <laughs> oh, Jank. Jank. Yeah, yeah, Jank. Well, yeah. No, probably, I, fucking no Jank 2 probably is. That, that shit. No. Yeah, dude. Yeah. It's, it's, it, the, the name 5%ers comes from the notion that only a mere 5% of all humanity, black people, know the truth about existence. That's what that movement's what, about. That? What is it, that like, it, it was the fucking it, it, it the actually black came Israelite from, shit. They actually came from Nation of Islam, and they created oh, okay. this group. So yeah, so yeah, that's what you get. That's what she. That's what she supports. It's racist, of course it is. Now in the beginning, this girl stated uh, that in a in a condescending way that Beyonce's performance has been deemed an endorsement for Black Lives Matters movement. Of course it was. You know, no shit, right? We've seen the video. We watched the video, but. It does promote violence or hatred towards cops, white cops at that, right? Because we've seen in our video where all the white cops were putting their hands up, right? Hands up, don't shoot, right? And we know that wasn't the case. Okay, we know that wasn't the case. But this is their narrative. This is the narrative they push. How about talking about police brutality in general and looking at these cases case by case and understand that many of these black individuals resisted arrest? Now, I'm not saying it was justified to kill him. I'm not saying that. Some were. Some weren't. I don't know. What do you guys think? And I got some statistics here. I think it's, I think it's absolutely bullshit that they should be even making this into a, a thing. Yeah. I mean, you know, like, I'm not, I'm not American, obviously, but uh, I, know this, I know how big the Super Bowl thing is. And if this girl is going to go out there and promote, basically, black power, hmm. I think that's... Uh, it's crim criminally bad to the whole of society because and, and how is that not dividing how is that not dividing the races of course yeah absolutely that, that that is basically saying that black people are somehow less done by than white people in america mm -hmm. which is absolutely not fucking true correct absolutely, absolutely. not true and I, and I can back it up with stats i can back it up with stats oh yeah gentlemen question for you didn't beyonce have a police escort to the stadium Oh, I'm sure they're she white did. Police. They're all white oh. police. They're all cool. Yeah. They're the cool whites. Yeah. Yeah. All right. No, but like uh, in that, in that video, what I re really, really love about Jank, and I think I commented on the video about him doing it, but uh, where his uh, his he flip flops his 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 stances really nicely on the Second Amendment because before he's always yelling about militias. It's all about the militias, mm -hmm. where he fail fails to realize that. Um, the militia are able-bodied men uh, ages 17 to 45 or people who used to be in the military. So myself and Grant are still in the militia uh, yeah. until we're 64. Uh, you know, whatever. So, that's, uh, so he doesn't know anything about what he's talking about there. Or he talks about how the Second Amendment was all about slavery and he still yeah. doesn't know what he's talking about there. But this time, he's so happy to talk about how blacks were just doing their Second Amendment right and all these racist fucking yeah. whites <laughs> wouldn't have it. And how the NRA is still racist to this day. It's like, right, because only whites are in the NRA. There's absolutely no blacks or Asians or Indians or anything else in the in there. It's all just those old white Republican motherfuckers who just want to take everyone else's gun right away. Except and then they and then he goes on about like Chicago and DC and New Orleans. Yeah. Really good bastions of de demo uh, Democrats and their uh, great gun grabbing uh, fucking views there. How's that going for the violence there? How's that going for all the people around? Well, let's see. The gangbangers, the people who actually commit the crimes, don't seem to have a problem getting the fucking guns, do they? The people who need to defend themselves do seem to have a problem getting their fucking guns, except if they want to pay a lot of money, which. Uh, let me see. If there's a lot of poverty among a certain demographic in a city and you're making it harder for them to be able to defend themselves, uh huh. God. Nah, fuck it. Whatever. It's better to let them have it. Jesus Christ with these fucking people. I hate, <laughs> I hate when Chank does this good shit and flip-flops waffles on what he's doing because he wants to push a certain view and he wants to push this narrative that uh, everyone is racist when it comes to people being in self-defense if they're not white. Fuck off. No, and, only, and, and the funny only, part about he, that... He's only, he's only pushing one narrative and that's white people can be racist and that's it. He's not saying that black people can be racist because black people are oppressed and black people need lifting up and championing and, and all these other things that are already been that already have been done. They're not 
these are not new things. I don't know why people are still drilling on about it. It's, Anthony, you know, you're seems, so right, Anthony. You're so like, right so on pathetic. that. But, you know, the more we talk about this, the more we, not us, but the more the general sort of community Public talks about it. how black people are oppressed and all that, people will start to mm -hmm. believe it unless they actually know the facts. Absolutely. Now, I know the yeah. facts of the company that I work for, and I know for a fact that black people are not fucking oppressed. In fact, it's the you know, other the, way around. The one thing it's that bothers the, me... It, it, the one thing that bothers me about Jenk, it's it's he's always willing to speak or be the voice of people that have their own voice. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, uh, like going back right, to right. the Sorry. <laughs> Yeah. Going back to the like I mean, I know this is off topic here, but like with the whole the name with the Washington Redskins. You know, you'll see people like Jenk and all will speak up for people that have their own voice. You know, yeah. stop, stop trying to stop trying to be their voice. Let them speak if they have a voice. Yeah, Thunderfoot oh, did yeah. a video today where he was basically saying that all these oppressed minorities that don't speak up, the reason why they're not speaking up is because they're just getting on with it. And it's these wanker white people that think they have to stand up for other people. Wanker white people, that's right. Yeah. Uh, I, I went over some yeah. so then standing up for these minorities. That are my, that all these minorities are going like, I'm fine. What yeah. the fuck are you talking about? Exactly. Yeah. And, and here comes my little... Here comes my little, uh, <laughs> little whoop. Uh, what the hell is it? Uh, was that a Carl Sagan whoop? whoop? No, 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 no that, that, that bastard who does uh, the uh, the um, commentary on football games. Whoop! Chris Berman. Yeah, Chris yeah. Berman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, sorry. Uh, it's my uh, um, everybody's ears there. <laughs> pet, pet peeve, pet peeve of mine. Yeah, um, yeah. It, it's uh, fr it's because of the nice cultural marxist or feminist ideology, third way bullshit type of thing. You want to talk about SJW, yeah, yeah. regressive left, whatever the fuck you want to call it. It's because of that shit that, that they're doing it. No, exactly. And if, the more you re realize that they, they, they do that type of crap, the, the more you'll realize that, uh, it, how big of a problem it, problem actually, it actually is. is and yeah. People aren't just fucking nuts talking about it. Yeah, exactly. Like I said, uh, you know, in my in the last topic, of course, is, you know, I, I feel it does promote division, of course, and it promotes sort of racism, you know, and, and also anti-white guilt. You like say, oh, my God, they went through so much and this and that. And the Black Panthers from the 50s and 60s, yeah, they might have had a cause back then, segregation. We know all about that. But the new Black Panther movement now is is violent. They're very violent. We've seen it in I Philadelphia. Was, I, was, I wasn't alive. Very violent. Yeah, but, but, yeah, but, but, yeah, the, but, but, yeah, but you know, there's, there's, there's a distinction between the two parties, but even the Black yeah, Panther yeah. Party is bad. And I'm trying to find it right now, but su uh, suspiciously it's been scrubbed. Uh, on we'll, we'll, we'll try to find weird. it. I got some stats here I want to go over real quick, Paul. Uh, oh. Another thing I want to say is that, you know, we talked about this, like, they're, they're ignoring the real true crime statistics and the real issues. At least Black Lives Matters, move, ma Matters movement is, you know, they should be paying attention more to, like, education, like I stated before, and the family. You know, that's where they should really concentrate on and the violence in the inner cities you know let's let's have these protests in the inner cities i'll back them up 110 percent when it comes to that shit right you know but i got some statistics here stats as of december 24th 2015 american police have fatally shot 965 people in 2015 of course the guardian of course stated this and well actually they stated there was a higher number of shootings but 564 of those killed were armed with a gun 281 were armed with another weapon only 90 were unarmed. In full three quarters of shootings, quote, police were under attack or defending someone who was. Now, if we're going to talk about those 90 unarmed attacks, let's be honest about it and, 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 and come out with the identification of who the officer was and who the perpetrator was. Let, let's do that. Let's be honest if we're going to come to, come to this uh, topic here, this issue. Let's look at not just white cops killing black people. This is the, yeah. this is the problem I have, and it really irritates me. That I've black seen, Lives I, Matter seen... started over this shit. That's, yeah, that's what pissed me I, I, I've off. seen you get an absolute ton of hate, Joe, about this cop thing. Now, well, I've, I've spoken to a police officer, right? And he, he, he tells us straight what's going on. It's, and it's exactly how you would imagine it to be. It's not, it's not some conspiracy. It's not anything like mm -hmm. that. Nobody's racist. It's just you've got a lot of people doing a lot of difficult jobs. That's it. It's not, it's not um, systemic racism. It's not yeah, systemic exactly. anything. It's, like it's just... People doing really difficult shit and trying to get things sorted out the best way they can. They don't want to. They don't want to cause more problems for themselves. I mean, why would any? Why would a cop want to do that? Exactly. Why would a cop who is even even a racist cop, right? Let's get a racist cop in there. Let's let's run that narrative. And then, even him has to run by the rules. Yeah. I mean, and, and the thing fuck, about it is when these is types ridiculous. of and, and the thing is, Anthony, you hit on a point that just uh, came to mind. Here is that. That's the thing is like when a white officer 
kills a black person unjustified, it's all all of a sudden it's racism. Uh, he was a racist cop when he had zero information about that cop that he was indeed a racist. That's what pisses me off. That's a narrative that they blow up with. You know what I mean? But let's course, look well, about. You never hear about a cop killing a white person. Yeah, you know. Oh, of course, that's not newsworthy. Not story, of course, story, no. and the stats are higher Fuck for that. that. Yeah, well, I'm going to go over these stats are. right now. Mm-hmm. Here, here's the, here's my uh, conclusion on these stats. But what about race? You know, the kinds of shootings that launched the Black Lives Matters movement, white police officers killing unarmed black men represent, and I quote here, and I'll put this stat down below in the description box, less than 4% of fatal police shootings. Less than 4%. And you're looking at the black, the black men make up 6% of the U.S. population. They account for 40% of the unarmed men shot to death by police this year. Yeah, well, stop involving yourself with police. Mm-hmm. You have a lot less chance of getting shot. Just respect the law. Respect it. It's pretty, it. pretty simple, right? Just, That's dude, I had, I had a and black... respect the law. It just don't f- resist. I'm like, Jesus I, Christ. I've managed to do it for 45 years of my life. It's really weird. Mm-hmm. It's not yeah. difficult whatsoever. Right. Cop pulls me over. I, holy I, shit, I, I shit I, myself. I, I'm like, I, holy shit, like, put my hands on the steering wheel. Fuck yes, shit. leave the Don't argue with them. Don't say you have certain rights. Fuck that. Don't say, oh, well, I have rights not to... Don't... Don't bring that shit up. Yes, officer, no yeah. officer, and just you're done. Yeah. Just get over, get your ticket, Dude, whatever. Fucking and just move the fuck on, man. Sake. Yeah, no, no, yeah. it's all because, yeah, like Drew, like Drew says, it's all because we're white. Even though I've been Drew. pulled over multiple times, it's all because I'm white, not because I'm extremely polite to the it's officer when I'm pulled over. And also, I don't, and I don't admit to shit, which is what you stupid people do. Like, do you know why I pulled you over? Because I was going fast? You fucking moron. <laughs> no, I have no idea why you pulled me over. What what seems to be the problem, officer? Well, uh, you seem to be going about eighty in the sixty-five here. Uh, was I? Not. Uh, what? <laughs> why'd you pull me over, motherfucker? Yeah. Uh, hey, look at me. I'm long hair and a metalhead. How many times do you think I get? I know, right, with? guys. I want to <laughs> really hit on one more point about this performance by Beyonce. I don't know if it was before or after, and I know Drew Autopsy87 made a video about this the other day, which was really fucking spot on, and I'll include that uh, link to his video down below. And it's about Mario Woods. It's this image here. I'm going to show the image right here. This is the image at the Super Bowl. Justice for Mario Woods. Now, I've read about this case the day after because I'm like, Mario Woods? Who's this guy? So I researched it, and Drew came out with a a video in the last couple days about this, and he's pretty spot on about it. So what happened is that, you know, he was armed with a kitchen knife, right? And he allegedly used it in a stabbing. So he stabbed somebody, they, and then the stabbing victim went to the hospital, right, uh, from the information I gathered. All right? So the police went out looking for this guy. So what happened was that they found the guy. They found him on the streets with the kitchen knife still in his hand, right? So he was reportedly, we got to put say reportedly, this is what's being reported, he was pepper sprayed and shot with a less lethal bean bag and ammunition. But he was still standing and refusing arrest. He refused arrest when he had the knife in his hand. And then a cop tried to go around him, try to, you know, go near him, and then he was walking towards the officer. What happened? Okay, well, the less lethal... Shit didn't fucking happen. Didn't work on him, right? So what happened was, when well, he got shot 15 times by many officers, not just one officer, many officers. Now, There's okay, at least 10. Now, okay, let let the judicial system figure out what happened. Let them come up with the evidence and facts. Let them look at the video and let them determine what happened. Not go and say justice for Mario Woods. That's just fucking bullshit. That is promoting her fucking agenda right there. That's exactly what it's doing. They're glorifying. Black Lives Matters, the pa- the Black Panthers. Now, when it comes to the Nation of Islam or Black Lives pa- Black uh, Black Panthers, Black Lives Matters, KKK, or any other racial hate group, guess what, guys? We got to call it the fuck out. It's 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 about not division. It's about you know coming together as a group and, and taking these cases, uh, taking these issues case by case, and looking at them, looking at the facts, the evidence. Let the judicial system, uh, you know, take course. It, no, just, it's just lock all me. black people up. <laughs> All right, yeah, no. Hey, one, <laughs> you one, one last. One Sorry last for that rant there, but that just <laughs> infuriated me. So, hey, one last little thing. Um, who's the who's the lady's name that's sitting with Jank? Is it Hannah? Anna. Anna. Yeah. Um, wait, Anna, wait. Anna. It, Anna Kasparin. No, that's not. No, that's no, not it, Anna. 
Hannah. Hannah. Uh, oh no, that's somebody else. Yes, Hannah Montana. Okay. I know you fucking love her, yeah. dude. I know you grew up with that. I wanted shit. to. I wanted to hit on the fact that she said that the Super Bowl is the most watched uh, sport around the world. Oh my gosh, she was so. Yeah, let her cool. leave America and see what that most spot. What mo, excuse me, it's, most watched sport. It's well, soccer, isn't it? Yeah, World Cup. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's World Cup. Yeah, yeah. but you're, you're talking and, about TYT. All they know about is Buckingham. Yeah. All they know about is America, and they briefly say, "Oh, we think that." We're acting like we uh, talk about foreign foreign stories, but it's always a, a cherry-picked foreign story to kind of push a narrative. They don't actually talk about anything really other than bullshit gossip shit in the America now. They're, right. T yeah, is want- fucking horrible. They 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 really are like sh- shit on uh, world awareness of anything. And if you and if you notice in that video, like shortly after she said something like that, it was something about seventy percent of NFL fans are white. So, you know, she she pretty much said that, you know, the affluent white people, you know, basically the rich white people need to get the message. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, that's they the need thing. to get this propagandist message this way if they're not yeah. getting other way. Uh, yeah, they're not getting it other way because, like, what do you mean not getting it other way? Like, the liberal media isn't doing all this shit? Yeah. Like, all the media us, isn't pushing rich, this, isn't but. pushing, like, the Black Lives Matter great type of thing? Fuck off. Uh, the thing about that is when it comes to the Super Bowl, it's just people coming together over a sport, you know, having a good time, drinking, you know, gambling, and just, you know, having a good time. You know, this is, uh, you know, diversity. People coming together, having a good time. doesn't matter what race you are, what color, what ethnicity or religion you are. They, people are just coming together, having a good time. And for her to come out to push this fucking agenda, it's like, what the fuck is this shit, dude? I, I'm like, it's just so ridiculous. I'm like, how's it, how does this not promote white fucking guilt? I'm like, of course it does. Absolutely it fucking does. And it's making white people out there, not all of them, hashtag not all. Some of them think, oh my God, yeah, they, they went through some bad times here. Nuance, nuance, nuance. <laughs> Anybody for some nuance? <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? I, I inform my son every single day that um, because he's white, he has a penalty to pay. Because he's white. Well, it's coming to that. And that's he has a privilege. It's, it's coming to that now. He does. Day. I just oh, kissed him good yeah, night. I mean, a white man just kissed a white boy. And, you know, these oh, things uh, happen. Yeah. I mean, you know, he yeah, doesn't so, deserve it. He doesn't deserve it because he's white. I mean, really, I should have just whipped him. You know? So I. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> Come on, That's Paul. a bit awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Paul's like, Paul was a great no. hey, like, hey, oh, hold, wait, one more thing, on Paul. You notice how they threw the uh, Bundy militia in the middle of that mix? Mm. Uh, like, yeah, yeah, well, what, yeah. I mean, they're they're just that's great. Uh, I love that they, they keep going on with that uh, Bundy militia. I know I, I I don't support everything the Bundy militia does. I does, but does. I was God playing damn, out the fact that done. they tried to relate. Listen, you know? guys, what happened yeah. in that video? What happened in that video is Jenk is oh. trying to use history. Hold on here, Jenk's trying to use oh. history to justify his claims nowadays. Like, hey guys, oh, this yeah, happened yeah. before, but nowadays, yeah, it's still a fucking problem. When it really is not a fucking problem, right? And he's trying to do this, like when it comes to slavery in the sixties or fifties and sixties with the Black Panthers, and and the Black Panthers went in the California courthouse with guns. You know, they weren't violent; they were just they were just um, you know adhering to their rights to the Second Amendment. But you know what? Hey, listen. After that, well, guess what? California passed this bill, like you, know, you can't have guns in this in the, in the court buildings anymore, right? And, and like somehow that was now. targeted You're... towards the Black Panthers, which it wasn't, because they said, you know what, this ain't right. Let's let's just make this a law now. They still have the right to carry guns, of course, okay? But he uses this as some kind of platform, some kind of narrative to promote, like, hey, listen, they were discriminating against, you know, to go into courtrooms with fucking guns. That's just bullshit, man. They just, well, saw, they just saw that as a threat, and they made a new law to say, hey, listen, just for now on, it's, I don't want, it's, it had nothing to do with black people. A law for everyone. You know, it's, a, it's a law for everyone, correct, oh, yeah. Grant. And they, yeah, yeah, he I mean, promoted yeah, it like it was exactly. a law against black people coming in. Get the fuck out of here. Just yeah, and, and fine. Blue. Okay, like, fine. Maybe the catalyst could be that the, uh, uh, fine. Okay, fine. The catalyst may have been that, uh, you know, the Black Panthers went in there with the guns. Fine. That's the catalyst for them to say, all right, you know what? Maybe we shouldn't have, a, maybe we shouldn't allow people in here with guns, especially if there's a massive amount of them. Correct. Beca- because, uh, although that is part. <laughs> <laughs> That's where they get kind of uh, iffy because it's kind of part of the whole reason behind the Second Amendment. But whatever, yeah, yeah, they're doing it for safety and all that shit. And so, I mean, it happens in all courtrooms now. It's everyone who isn't a public service officer mm-hmm. who isn't allowed, like you know, by law, 
to carry a, a, court, a gun in a courtroom. It's like that nowadays, but yeah, this could have been the catalyst. It could have been a catalyst if, say, uh, some white supremacist group came in there with a whole bunch of guns and they were trying to do something. And they had people who, who were on the, on the other side and were like, oh, my God, we really need to crack down on this. It's just, you know, they, it's, it's, it had the same fucking effect, okay? Yeah. Every motherfucker was affected by it, not just one group. Every race That's has what to I walk hate about through that. that metal detector. Yeah, absolutely. It doesn't matter. It's like, it, hey, listen, it's it, a metal detector for black people here. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, it, it, all it's races. Yeah, yeah, race, right? so. it's, a, it's just, and, re, it's a ridiculous claim. And Beyonce should be ashamed of herself, and I'll call her out here, for doing this. I'm like, it's just so ridiculous. Promoting fucking, I guess you would say racism. It's dividing, division of the fucking races. I'm like, this.